So here's a picture of the cubane molecule, which is an alkane that's shaped like a cube. And for that reason, it's one of my favorite molecules. I just think it's really cool looking. And you can see that at each of the corners of the cube, there is a carbon. So there are eight carbons total. And then there's also a hydrogen coming off of each of those carbons for a molecular formula of C8H8. At first, chemists, a lot of chemists didn't think this molecule could be made because of the high amount of angle strain that's present in this molecule. But it was made starting in the 1960s. And it's being looked at for a lot of potential uses in medicine and explosives these days. And because you can nitrate it and make things like octanitrocubane and, and heptanitrocubane, which are potential explosives for the future. And we're going to look and see if we can name cubane using IUPAC nomenclature in this video. So let's, let's first think about the, the rules we learned in the video on bicyclic nomenclature. And if you're trying to figure out how many rings are in a system, you have to make cuts and figure out how many cuts does it take to get to an open chain alkane. So if we start with this yellow version of cubane over here on the left, I'm going to start cutting bonds. And let's see how many cuts it takes to get to an open chain alkane. For example, I could start by cutting right here. So we'll say that's our first cut. And then our second cut, we could make a cut right back here like that. So we could make that my second cut here on, on, my, on my cubane. And then for my third cut, I'm going to go for this one right up here. So we'll take care of that one. So that's three cuts so far. And then if I just go ahead and take out this one, this bond right here, and then this bond right here, so that's cuts four and five, I now get an open chain alkane. So it took five cuts for us to do that. So there are five rings in cubane. So it's pentacyclo. So that's just not immediately obvious uh, to me anyway as, as, as to why there are are five rings in cubane. So let's go ahead and write pentacyclo to start the IUPAC name here. So pentacyclo, meaning five rings. And then we start our brackets, just like we did in the video on bicyclic nomenclature. And to finish naming cubane, we're going to pretend like it is a bicyclic compound. And the first thing we do is identify our bridgehead carbons, right? So the com the carbons that are common to both of the two rings here. So hopefully it's obvious those are two rings, and those are the bridgehead carbons that connect those two rings. When you number a bicyclic a bicyclic compound, you start at one of the bridgehead carbons, and then you go the longest path first. So I'm going to start at this carbon, and I'm going to go the longest path, which would be up here. So this would be number two, then this would be number three, carbon number four, carbon number five, and carbon number six, which takes me to the other bridgehead carbon. And then you name your, your next longest path. So I'm just going to continue around and make this carbon seven, and then make this one back here carbon eight. So those are my eight carbons of cubane. And so once again, I can continue to pretend like it's a bicyclic molecule. And the next thing I would do is I would, I would name the number of carbons in my longest path. So the number of carbons in my longest path would be this one. So there would be one, two, three, four carbons. Remember, you, you exclude the bridgehead carbons when you're doing this. So we're going to start with a four right here, like that. Next, you do the number of carbons in your second longest path. So we can, uh, we can see my second longest path would be this one right here. And there are two carbons in my second longest path. So I go ahead and put a two over here, like that. And then finally, it's the number of carbons between the bridgehead carbons, which in this example, of course, there are no carbons between my two bridgehead carbons. So I would put a zero here, like that. But of course, uh, cubane is not a, a bicyclic compound, so we have to keep going. We have to, we have to figure out how I can continue naming this molecule. And the way to do it is to next think about how many carbons are there between carbons uh, two and five. So if I draw, if I draw a dashed line in here, right, so I can pretend like I'm connecting those two right there. And of course, there are no carbons between two and five. So I can keep going. I can make this a zero, and I can put a two comma five, saying there are no carbons between between carbons two and five. And I can continue on. I can do that between the three and the eight, right? So if I were to connect the three and the eight back here like that, there are no carbons between three and eight, so I can write zero. 
and then 3 comma 8. And of course I can do the same thing over here on the right. So between 4 and 7 there are no carbons. Right, so between 4 and 7 there are no carbons, so I can write, I can write 0, 4, and 7 like that. So let me just clear up that 7 there, and we're done with our brackets. So the last thing you need to do when you're naming, when you're naming, a, when you're naming a polycyclic alkane like this is to figure out how many total carbons are in the molecule. Well, of course, there are 8, so this is octane. So I can go ahead and write octane down here like that, and I have my IUPAC name for cubane. It is pentacyclo 420 octane and there are several other molecules that are similar to, to cubane, which are also very interesting. So molecules like dodecahedrane uh, would be one to check out as well, if you like the structure of cubane.